What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We are here to help you pass your NCLEX and nursing school exams like a boss. And today we're continuing on with our lab value lectures and we're gonna be discussing anion gap. Let's get our nurse on. So let's talk about anion gap and why it's important. So the definition of an anion gap is the measurement of the difference or gap between the negatively charged anions and positively charged cation electrolytes. If the anion gap is too high or too low, it may be a sign of a disorder in your lungs, kidneys, or other organ systems. So we typically like to have our anion gap between 3 to 11 milliequivalents per liter. So when we're trying to figure out how we get our anion gap, this is the formula that we use. So what we do is we add our potassium and our sodium together, and then we add our chloride and our bicarb together, and that is how we get that value. So say we have a potassium of four, a sodium of 140, a chloride of 110, and a bicarb of 25. When we add those two values to themselves and then subtract them, we get an anion gap of nine milliequivalents per liter, meaning that we have extra anion in the blood. So that those additional anions could be keto acids as well as lactic acids. So ultimately, the more anions we have, the increase the gap, meaning the higher the number, the more acids that can be found in the blood. So when we're obtaining an anion gap for testing, we're going to send it in either a green or red top tube. Those are the two tubes that we would use to collect this particular specimen. As you know, every single tube has negative pressure located inside. So once that needle is introduced into the tube, the blood should automatically rush in. Again, you don't want to push blood into a test tube because it can cause hemolysis, which is a breakdown of the cells, thus skewing our overall counts. So if we have decreased reliability of the sample, we're gonna have high electrolyte counts, and that can ultimately lead to wrong treatment based on improper technique. So let's look at what happens when we have abnormal values and what the potential causes are behind that. So we have an increased anion gap, we use the following mnemonic, and that's mud piles. So mud piles are the specific causes of an increased anion gap. So for the M, we have methanol poisoning. That's a compound that we find in peppermint and other natural oils, and it can also be found in decongestants as well as many analgesics. Uh, the U stands for uremia. It's an increase in sulfuric acid and lactic acid as kidney disease continue to progress. D stands for, of course, diabetic ketoacidosis. This is when we use the anion gap the most because of that increase in serum ketones. There's a lot of acids, right? Um, the P stands for propylene glycol toxicity. That's a synthetic food additive. The I stands for infection. L for lactic acidosis due to either trauma or sepsis, of course, you'll see it the most. E stands for ethylene glycol toxicity. That's those patients that drink antifreeze out of Gatorade bottles because they thought it was Gatorade. It looks pretty much the same. And the S stands for salicylate poisoning, which is your aspirin. So really you're having this massive loss of bicarbonate, which is what's increasing that acidosis in the body. So there's times where you can have a normal anion gap, but have a low pH, meaning that there's some kind of acidosis taking place, but it hasn't affected the anion gap. And the reason that that occurs is because of that loss of bicarbonate. So when you have kidney failure, you lose it through the urine, and when you have diarrhea, you're losing it through the stool. And lastly, if you have a decreased anion gap, one of the only reasons that I can think of is a low albumin level, less than three milliequivalents per liter, that can ultimately affect the distribution of your electrolytes and decrease your anion gap. I hope that this video was helpful in helping pass your arterial blood gas, nursing school exams, as well as your NCLEX, 
like a boss. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe here to my YouTube and hit that notification bell so that way you're informed every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com. There I'm going to have NCLEX style questions, resources, handouts, everything you need to pass those exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.